We know that the Rebbe wanted it, that every Bokhar, before he gets married, should learn Yeridei and get Smiche. And the Seder in 770 was that when a Bokhar became 20, that's when he considered learning Yeridei. But it wasn't that just he decided to learn Yeridei, but the Seder was that you would tell the Anhole that you're 20 and you're considering learning Yeridei. And they would ask the Rebbe, because the Anhole used to go into Yechidis once a month, and they would give a report and discuss with the Rebbe the Nyonim and the the Yeshiva and the the Bochrim. So they would go in, Mizman Lizman, with a list where Bochrim, who became 20, were thinking of starting Yeridei. And the Rebbe would look through the list, and the Rebbe would, Derech Klal, agree. Sometimes he would say no on certain Bochr. But one thing was clear, that no one started without getting a shoes for the Rebbe. And so, mostly the Rebbe would give the shoes, sometimes not. Sometimes I believe it was because some Bokhrim maybe were not shy to it. And sometimes it was because it seemed that when you start learning your day, it's already a beginning of going out of the yeshiva. And the Rebbe didn't want. Sometimes he wanted you should continue learning a Mora and be more involved in the yeshiva. But whatever the reason is, sometimes mostly he would agree, sometimes he would not agree. When I became 20, I spoke to Rabbi Mentlik and I told him that I'm thinking of starting the day. He said, very good. And he said, I'll put you down on the list. So the next time they went into Yechidis, they gave the Rebbe the list. The Rebbe looked down the list, and to most of them he agreed. When it came to my name, the Rebbe stopped, and he looked at it, and he said to Dan Holder, and basically, I think, Rabbi Mentlik, Er Vileich learning Yeridea. He also wants to learn Yeridea. And then the Rebbe said, Kivyochel, like a joke. He quoted the Posig. It says in the Posig in Tanakh, Esmi Yeridea, Vesmi Yovin Shmua, it says the word Yeredeya. The name Yeredeya, the word Yeredeya means to teach. Yeredeya is to teach, Deya is to teach knowledge. And it's connected to this Posik. That's where the word Yeredeya comes from. But the meaning of the Posik is that the Novi is complaining that nobody is listening to the words that he gives over from Hashem. So he said, who should I teach? Maybe I should teach knowledge. It's me Yeredeya. Who should I teach knowledge? Maybe I should teach knowledge. And as me, Yovin Shmua, who should I give to understand what I hear from Hashem? Kumule Micholov, the little babies that just weaned off drinking the milk. Atikim Meshadayim, those that just got away from drinking for their mother's breast the milk. That's what the Posik says. So the Rebbe used this Posik and he said, the Posik says, as me, Yere Deye, as me, Yovin Shmua, Gmule Micholov, Atikim Meshadayim. So it comes out, the Rebbe said, that it's Shaykhus to little children. How is it possible that an older Bokhar should want to learn Yeridei? When the Posik says that Mi Yeridei, it should be Gmuli Mechol of Atikim Shadaim. Obviously, this is not connected to the Posik, but the Rebbe used it to play on words, and the Rebbe used those words to say that I shouldn't learn Yeridei because it's for little children, basically, according to this Derech uh, which he said in the form of a joke. So basically, he said, I should not start learning Yeridei. Then Rabbi Lamentlik asked the Rebbe, should he start the next man? So the Rebbe said, let him write in to me, and then I'll answer him then. So obviously, this man I didn't learn Yeridei. And next man, when I asked the Rebbe, the Rebbe agreed, and that's when I started learning Yeridei. But Negei, the Sinyan, that at the end of every Sikha, and look at the Sikha, it says from which Fabreng and the Sikha was taken from. I just want to mention that at one point when you're writing the Sikhas, we had a swatter. Why is it Negea to write exactly when it was taken from? So we thought maybe they let's not write it. So one of the Sikhas we talked didn't write it. And when the Rebbe was Magia the Sikha and he gave out the Sikha Mugia, at the end of the Sikha, he made two halves, two parentheses from two sides, indicating fill in the date. In other words, the Rebbe did want that the date should be written there. Now, why it was like that, there could be all kinds of biurim, but the simple beer, I think, why the Rebbe wanted, I'm just being a beer, even though I don't usually give these biurim, just I'm stating facts, but I think the beer, one of the biurim is because when a sicha came out for a Shabbos, usually what it would mean is that this is the union that the Rebbe wants, the Shabbos, and if there was a certain hero, it was negated to that day. So anything the Rebbe spoke by Fabrengen, yes, that's the Tzav Ashod, that's what the Rebbe is telling us to do. The Sichas that came out in the Kutus Sichas, the weekly Likud, was not picked by the Rebbe, it was picked by the people who wrote it. So it's not that the Rebbe felt that this week, the Rebbe knew, but for whatever reason, that this week, this Sinyan of Zachopton. So if I wouldn't say a date at the end, it seems like the Rebbe is giving out this Sichas for this Shabbos, this is the Inyan. And the Rebbe wanted to show it's Lav Davke. So he said that this is taken from the Sikha that was said years ago. So that's why he wanted it should be there. Avadis Ashgoch Protis, if it was Lopel, 
went out for the Shabbat, had the Shaykh specifically the Shabbat, but it's not what the Rebbe, it's not the Rebbe's intention, the Rebbe did it. That could be one of the beauty why the Rebbe wanted that it should Bedafke say the time when the uh, Sikha was said. Everyone knows the story of the Rebbe concerning Hurricane Andrew. But there is another hurricane and a story with the Rebbe that many people do know, but many people don't know it. And that's a hurricane that happened much earlier. And that happened in the year Tovshin Lametes, 1979. And they said that there's a hurricane coming towards Miami Beach, possible towards Miami Beach, and that was called Hurricane David. And first there was a hurricane watch, as the say there is, that when there's a hurricane coming and they possible it'll come towards a certain place that place is under hurricane watch then when it gets closer and it's more chance it'll happen it turns into hurricane warning so remember we were here there was finally a hurricane warning and they said to make all the preparations and i remember having all the preparations even taking the sodium out of the bottom shelves putting it on the tables so it's in case it floods it shouldn't ruin the sodium and we made all the preparations and then they said we should evacuate now, I don't remember if it was a mandatory evacuation or they just recommended it, but they said to evacuate. So we decided we were going to evacuate. So finally, it was, I think, Sunday morning, and then they said it's going to come that evening. So we decided we're going to evacuate. But before we left, we were going to Coral Gables. Rabbi Eliezer, had a Chabad house there, and there it was more safe, and we had little children in the house. So we were going to Coral Gables to stay there during the hurricane. But before I left, we left, the family left in the morning, I tried to call some 70, called the office, called the mosquito, so they should ask the Rebbe for a brocha. Now, maybe other people also called, which possible that all, many people called. I don't know, I could just tell the story of the way I was involved. So I called, I couldn't get through to mosquitoes. So I called my parents home, my father answered the phone, and I asked him if he could do me a favor, since I can't get through the mosquitoes, he should walk over to 770. I was matriachim, but it was important, and I said, go over and give over mosquitoes. They asked the Rebbe for a broche. And as soon as I asked my father to do this, we got into the car and we drove all the way to Coral Gables. We came to Coral Gables, we heard rumors that the Rebbe said this, the Rebbe said that, I didn't know, so right away I picked up the phone and I called Rabbi Klein. And he asked him, what's going on? So Rabbi Yom Klein tells me, that he got the message, my father told him. Like I said, maybe there are other people also told him, maybe they have their story, I don't know, I just know my father told him. And he said he wrote down on a tzettel, and when he went into the Rebbe, he gave the Rebbe the tzettel in the Rebbe's hand. And the tzettel it said that there is this hurricane coming, and they say that's a very serious one, and uh, Anash in Miami are asking for a brocha, that's what he wrote. So the Rebbe on the spot wrote on the tzettel these words, Kenire Magzimin. It looks that they're exaggerating, which right away it sounds so interesting that the Rebbe is sitting in New York in Brooklyn and is telling us that the Hurricane Center is exaggerating what they're saying. But when he wrote, the Rebbe wrote that settle, those words, and he gave it to Rabbi Klein, Rabbi Klein tells the Rebbe, oh, but Anash in Miami, made it. this is what he told me he said, but Anash in Miami are afraid. So all the Rebbe did was he took his hand and made like the Rebbe could make like with a movement of his hand, ah, made like with a beetle dick movement, ah, and that's all he said. We heard that, so Baruch Hashem, so we knew that we we're nothing to be afraid of, but we had already gone there, so we stay there. And somehow they borrowed someplace a TV, and at night we're sitting and watching, and they're talking all about the hurricane coming, Mamish, and it's coming straight towards Miami Beach, towards Miami Beach, which in the place where we were would also be very strong winds. And we were waiting for the strong winds to come, and it was very schwach. And in the middle, we saw on the TV that they were saying that for some reason, they don't know why, but all of a sudden, when it got pretty close, it just made a turn, and we got very little of it. And then we were all saying that the Rebbe, when he made the ah with his hand, moved it away, and talked at the last minute, it moved away, and basically, for us, really nothing happened. In the I mean, the Tomsville, the Seder used to be, and not like it's now that when you become Bar Mitzvah, you start wearing both pairs of film, even the two months before Bar Mitzvah, when you start preparing and you put on film every day, we also put on uh, Rabbi Tom's film, but it used to be that only when you became 18 years old, you would start putting on Rabbi Tom's film. Actually, the Rebbe in Tovshin Yud already 
in the Sichas of the first few days after the Stalkers of the Friedrich Rebbe, there's already a big horror where the Rebbe writes that he doesn't understand why we don't start putting out of the Tomsville and Farm Bar Mitzvah, and the meaning like that is even by Anash, and the Rebbe was wondering why. And it took the Rebbe 25 years till Tov Shin Lamed Hay when the Rebbe officially said that from now on you should start putting out from Bar Mitzvah. But till then, the Seder was that you would put out from 18, and even that, it was only after he asked the Rebbe. So, when I became 18 years old, I went to Yechidus. That's when you would ask the Rebbe. Actually, my Yechidus was a few weeks before my birthday because uh, my birthday is in the middle of the summer and we are American Shluches, so I went out, I went in before. So one of the questions I asked the Rebbe was whether I should start putting out a Minna Tom's film. The Rebbe said yes, but with the condition that I should have my own, I should uh, buy the, get a Minna Tom's film. But then I asked the Rebbe, should I wait till I become 18, because this was a few weeks before, or should I start now? And the Rebbe said, In other words, I said I should start right away. And I did. But the next year, I went to Yechides, I wrote to the Rebbe that in the beginning, right in the beginning, since I wasn't used to it yet, so I forgot once to put the Rebbe in the Townsville. So what should I do? So the Rebbe said, the first thing is that since it was right in the beginning, it's not so bad. I don't remember the expression he used, but not so bad, because uh, the whole reason, he didn't tie trees, but that's obvious. That the whole reason is because it became like a nether. If you're macabre upon yourself, it's like a nether. But since it's in the beginning, it wasn't, you weren't used to it, so the nether wasn't really a nether yet because you didn't do it for long. But it's not so bad. And then he said that you should, I should learn in Shulchan Aruch, the halachas of Hilchas Tfilin. And he said, besides the halachas that have to do with Safrus, like Simul Amit Beis, and also in Chesidus, to learn the memorium that have to do with Tfilin. When Reb Sholem Ber Levitin got married, Rabbi Levitin, who is the shliach to the state of Washington, got married in California, a group of Bochrim, a few Bachrim went down to California to be by the Hassan, and we were there for a few days. Thursday night, we were sitting in the house of Rabbi Reitschik, and there was a call that came in, and it was Rabbi Chadokam on the line, and he asked to speak to one of the Bachrim. So I took the phone, and Rabbi Chadokam says, when are you planning to come back? So I said, we're planning to come back for Shabbos. So he said, why? So I said, because there might be a Fabrengen Shabbos, so we want to, don't want to miss the Fabrengen. So he said, I'm telling you there won't be a Fabrengen Shabbos, so you could stay there and go speak in the shuls and, you know, be Mefit Samayones and stay there. The group of Bochum should stay there. So I started to argue with him. He said, we're not so sure, even though you say there won't be Fabrengen, but maybe there will be. Never sure. We don't want to miss it. And I basically was arguing with him that we'd really want to come back. So he tells me, I'd like to speak to Rabbi Reitschik. So I gave the phone to Rabbi Reitschik. Rabbi Reitschik walked out for a few moments in another room, spoke on the phone, came back, and he told me, told all of us, that you should know, first of all, that when Rabbi Chadnikov was talking to you, the Rebbe was on the line. And uh, you should know that he really wants you to stay, and if the Rebbe was on the line, obviously that's the Rotson of the Rebbe. So, obviously, that there's no question about it, and we stayed. And the truth is, Rabbi Reitschik actually take, arranged that all the Bochrim who were there should speak in the shuls. I myself spoke in one shul in the morning by Rabbi Halberstam shul in the morning before Musev, and by Shalashudas, a different shul, Rabbi Groman's shul. So, I, we spoke there, and the other Bochrim spoke in the other shuls, and it was really, really a Kiddush Hashem. When we came back, we found out what happened. We know that the Anhola goes into, used to go into Yechidus once a month, Thursday nights, and give a report to the Rebbe what was doing with the Bochrim. So that time when they went in, so they gave the Rebbe a report, and they said that a group of Bochrim went down to California. And one of the people in the Anhole, the main person in the Anhole was Rabbi Shmuel Levitin, who was the Zayd of Rabbi Levitin, but he didn't go to the Hasana because he's an older man, he couldn't go. So he was there, and the Rebbe said, when they heard this, he said, when are they coming back? They said they're coming back for Shabbos. So the Rebbe said, then, why should they come back for Shabbos? Why shouldn't they stay there and go out in the shuls and speak in the shuls? And I think, I don't know if the rest of Nanhola walked out and Shmuel himself stayed, or they all stayed. I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly how it was. But Lepeil, on the spot, the Rebbe buzzed Rabbi Chadakov. And he told Rabbi Chadakov, to call the Bochrim and tell the Bochrim that they should stay for Shabbos. That's when Rabbi Chadakov called us. And it seems like the Rebbe was still on the line because he buzzed Rabbi Chadakov to call and the Rebbe was still on the line. And that's when the call that we got 
that uh, Rabbi Chodakov said we should stay, and we stayed, and Tak at the end was that it made a big Kiddush Hashem and all the shuls we spoke as the Rebbe wanted. But this just shows how the Rebbe would want that the Bochrim or anybody should take any opportunity that they're able to bring Chassidus and be Mefar some Chassidus and make a Kiddush Hashem and be the King Shem Lubavitch has to be used 100% for this purpose. Time there's an opportunity to bring a Kiddush Hashem the Rebbe used the opportunity and pushed that this should be, we should bring Chassidus to the world. Another example of what the Rebbe wanting to take any opportunity that the Bochrim should speak tyrants and, and be made fit in the of Chassidus was when Rabbi Avram Levitansky, all of a Shalom, got married in Montreal. There was a whole bus, a chartered bus that went to the Chassaner. Actually, Reb Sholem Ber, Kalmasan, who was in Cincinnati, he was the one that was in charge. And a lot of Bochrim went to the Chassanah. We were all friends of Rabbi Levitansky. Uh, when he wrote into the Rebbe that we're, this group is going to the Chassanah, he said, Rebbe answered a uh, few lines of an answer, Bixav Yat Kedish. I don't remember the words of the answer, but I remember the first few words. The first few words started with the words, Bevada Yispashtu Bechol Ho'ir that for sure that these Bochrim are going to go out throughout the whole city, and then he continues saying we should go to the Rabbonim to speak to them and learning and go to see what you can do. So Take, all the Bochrim were divided by someone who took care and sent us, and I remember I myself with Rabbi Levitin, actually with Rabbi Levitin, we went to Rabbi Hirschberg. Rabbi Hirschberg yet at that time was not affiliated with Lubavitch, he wasn't Rosh Hashiva in the Yeshiva, and he wasn't Bechal close to Lubavitch. And I remember we went to Rabbi Hirschsprung to speak and learning. Other we went to other Rabbi to speak to learning. But it's all because the Rebbe used the opportunity that's there, that Bochim right there, that the Bochim should go and speak and learning and bring, you know, make a kiddush Hashem, make a kiddush Hashem for for Taira Mitzvah, make a kiddush Hashem for Lubavitch. That was the whole tachlis. Another time when the opportunity was used. And the Rebbe was very happy about when you go out and uh, you speak to other Rabbonim, etc., etc., was Yutas Kislev Tov Shin Choftes. Yutas Kislev Tov Shin Choftes, one, was, one night was the Rebbe's Fabrengen. The next night, there was a big, big Nesibe in Boston that they made in honor of Yutas Kislev. And it was like a dinner. And Rabbi Soloveitchik, Rabbi Yosha Ber Soloveitchik, was the guest speaker there. So, we got a bo- so they got people who were involved, got a group of Bochrim to come down to there that uh, in case we have to speak to him, there should be Bochrim, we're able to speak to Rabbi Soloveitchik. The names of the Bochrim were Rachmiel Stillman, Shalmber Weinberg, Shalmber Lipsker, Shalmber Levitin, myself, Zalman Deitch, and, Ab- and Abba Pekarski. And we went down there. When we came there, this was a very beautiful dinner, and he had Rabbi Soloveitchik there, and he had some of his Talmidim there with him. And there was a whole program, but then when it came for him to speak, he got up and he spoke for a long time. He spoke for about, I would say, two hours. And the whole teichon of his speech was to explain the union of Chassidus, was the Ufta Chassidus and the different Chassidus and, and, and the others and different and Tanya and Nefshachayim. And he spoke very, very long arichas. After the big official part was over, people left and he was still there with his Talmidim. He turns around to us, the Bochrim, and he says, No, Sidochitus Kislev, and that's bring it. So we sat down to Fabring and we sat down and we started talking. So we were talking all about different yonim. But the Rebbe and different, the only Nigla that the Rebbe said, one of the things was Tovshin Chavtes, every Fabring and the Rebbe explained another piece of Geras HaTshuva. Poshet, he taught and explained Biurim in the Geras HaTshuva, like Mamish, like, like, like Mashpia speaking and teaching every Fabring, next piece, the next piece, the next piece. So we were involved in the Sikhs, and since the Geras HaTshuva is a lot connected to Hilchas Tshuva in the Rambam, so we were as Bochrim pretty close in Hilchas Tshuva the Rambam. By Rabbi Soloveitchik, Rambam is one of, his most, his most, one of the most important things by him. And in the Rambam Gufa, he was very strong into Hilchas Shuva. So we were talking about Hilchas Shuva, the Rambam, different things. That, and he was in Nispol, and he's Talmidim in Nispol, Bochrim, even Bochrim that know how to learn. They don't know Hilchas Shuva, you know, maybe Hilchas Niske moment. So he was in Nispol, and we were talking. Then we spoke about the Kavat Tairich, the Rebbe Shita, and Kavat Tairich, and different Yonim and the Rebbe's Biurim. And it made basically a Kiddush Hashem. His Talmidim was standing around and looking. It was very nice. We came back. And uh, we met, uh, gave over Don Hole a report of what happened. It was punk that Thursday night that Don Hole went to the Yechidis. Like I said, they go into Yechid, They used to go into Yechidis once a month to give a report. So whenever there was something nice, something good to tell about the book, then they would tell the Rebbe. So they told the Rebbe the whole thing of, of the whole story that we were telling them. So the Rebbe told them, first of all, one of the things we spoke about 
was about Sfira Kabatairich. So the Rebbe mentioned to them an interesting medrash, which later in the Sikhs the Rebbe spoke a lot about it. The medrash that it says that uh, when Sfira comes out on Sunday, it's Tmimes. When it comes out on Sunday, so the Rebbe said it's a strange medrash, and the Rebbe mentioned it behemshik to what they said we spoke about. But then the Rebbe said that the day should tell us, the Bokhrim, that we should give him a report of what happened, what he spoke about, and what this was all about. So, when Rabbi, they came out, Rabbi Mantik told me that the Rebbe wants a report, so sit down. It's a report of a drosha from two hours, or two and a half hours, it's so long, that uh, whatever he remembered. So I wrote down in the Kudu, the Kitzur, of what the Rebbe, of what the Rebbe Soloveitchik said. I wrote that down. There was no recording from it. Actually, years, years, years later, we found a certain a shtickle recording from one piece of his drosha, about 15 minutes of his drosha, which is a very crucial piece of his drosha that we do have a recording of. But then we didn't have, so anyway, we wrote it down. Then I wrote down all the, the nakudas of what we spoke about from the Rebbe's Fabrengen. And I gave it into the Rebbe. The Rebbe answered, I'll answer, and I will read the answer that the Rebbe wrote. The Rebbe wrote first, Tach ala duch, and then a line. And then he wrote these words, Bevadai, ki meduber kama poamim, shoklu v'toru, and after the word shoklu v'toru, the Rebbe made an arrow circling the names, because we signed this duch, we all signed our names. So the Rebbe made like a semicircle around all the names, with an arrow pointing to the names, and then an arrow pointing to the, after the word shoklu v'toru. In other words, he was saying, Bevadai, ki meduber kama poamim, shoklu v'toru, you guys, shoklu v'toru, you spoke about gam mishalohem, Underline the word Mishalahem, that you also for sure discussed your own inyonim, binyonim anal. In this inyonim, you probably gave your own input. And then in parentheses, loy rak chazore behanidber by his fathers. End of parentheses. And not only that, you just repeated what we spoke about the Fabrengen. So everybody really hoped that when we spoke, we also said our own things to show that, you know, you're learning not only your chazring what the Rebbe said. And then the Rebbe added the words, Betove. I am based with Tovei Alei and Brocha. The Rebbe was very happy when he heard that there was something like this that brought in Kiddush Hashem, Kiddush Hashem Lubavitch, that there are Bochrim who are able to speak and learning and make Kiddush Hashem. That was something that the Rebbe had great nachas from. Tov Shem Chavhei, when the Rebbe said Shiva after his mother, a lot of Rebbe's and Rabbonim and great people came to be Menachem over the Rebbe. Uh, I happened to be inside the room when they were inside many of the times, not the whole time, but many of the times when they came in, I was sitting, I was standing there, I was able to listen. They didn't let people in, but I got in, I don't know why, maybe because of Chazara or something, I don't know, but I was inside, so I heard. So I want to repeat what, I, what happened when the Munkach Rebbe came. First the Satma Rebbe was there, and the Satma Rebbe spoke with the Rebbe, but when the Satma Rebbe got up, the Munkach Rebbe sat down. I don't think the Rebbe ever saw him or even saw a picture of him. When he sat down, I remember, the Rebbe just turned around to Rabbi Groner and says to him, Does he the Minchas Elozer's Einikel? This is the Minchas Elozer's grandson? And he said yes. So the Rebbe started talking to him. And the first thing that the Rebbe said was like this. When we were in Russia, we were, you know, separated, isolated from the world. We was Tutsach of the world. So once the Rebbe said, I saw the Shver writing a letter, and the title, there was a, a title of five, six lines to the person he was writing. So I asked the Shver, to who is he writing? And he said, to Ayer Zayden. That's what he told him. And then he spoke to him about printing the Svarim of the Michas Alozer. And he said, he answered him, but they're like a printer. But the Rebbe said that they should print more Shuvas if there is. One of the things that was going on then is the Rebbe wanted to go to the mikveh before Mincha and Ervim Kippur. Ervim Kippur, the Rebbe got up from Shiva, but he don't get up till later, till Somach Lach Sheikh, it says. But Ervim Kippur, you go to the mikveh, and the Rebbe wanted to go before Mincha. At the din, it says he shouldn't. So the Rebbe was looking for a heter. So the Rebbe asked a lot of the Rabbonim. He asked the Satmar Rebbe for a heter. And he asked the other, the only one, I think, the way Midgeret Yamul, the Rabbi Rifkin, the Rebbe said to him, he said yes, and the Rebbe said to him, I didn't find somebody else. So the Rebbe would ask different Rabbonim. So the Rebbe told him, the, the, the Munkacher, he said, that, Ich bin sicher, as Eimivol getrucht alle tshuves from Minchas Elozer, 
But the Shalain Gifun and I had the Rabbi Nimik for Mincha. I would have found the head to go to the Mikvah for Mincha a long time ago. And he said his Swarim are, so, are, are good because there are so many questions that Misnagdim other people ask in Aloche about the meaning of Chasidim. And the Mincha Saloza gives answers to all these questions of Pinigla. So that's why it's so important. And he says, I definitely, in Mizichar, I was watching before and I had to have been in a mikve far mincha. In that shiva, that the Rebbe said shiva, and uh, there's different Rabbonim came. So I remember Rabbi Teitelbaum, that's the father of Rabbi Tzchak Meir Teitelbaum of Miami, of Eli Teitelbaum. He was a very, very choshe varov. He was a big Talmud Chocham. So I remember he came. And I was inside when he came, he sat down, and uh, the Rebbe said to him, No, the Oval the Oval has to be the one to start. So Rabbi Teitelbaum says to the Rebbe, Dosi nor Bastama Ayin, Stama mentioned, Aber Ba'at Tzadik is Andish. Ba'at Tzadik is the Menachmim de Avelim. He says, Ba'at Tzadik is different. The ones that come to comfort, to be Menachem, they're the Avelim. What he really meant was, it says in Rambam that Moshe when I came, Godel, the, when you come to Menachem Ovel, like Kevin Godel, really, it's considered he sits and everyone goes. Uh, it's different that he's considered the, the, the Menachem and everyone else is called Avelim. Anyway, this is what he meant, but he told the Rebbe these words. He said, Dos is al Bastama mention of a Tzadik is Andesh, but Tzadik is any Menachem de Avelim. So the Rebbe says to him, Ha? Huh? So he repeats it again. A Tzadik is Andesh, but a Tzadik the Menachem is de Avelim. So the Rebbe says to him, Ha? Huh? And repeats it a third time, and the Rebbe said, Ha, and Madame has given The Rebbe like, didn't want to acknowledge, didn't say it, just like as if he didn't hear what he said, because he was saying something to the Rebbe that you are at Sadiq. So the Rebbe like, said, Ha, and that was it. Then they started talking about other things. I would like to relate what happened around the time of Ofti Shetov Shinchov Hei when the Rebbe's mother, the Rebbe Tzachana, passed away. She was nostalgic. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details exactly what happened when the Rebbe was told and all these different things. It takes a long time and a lot of details. I'm just going to say, B'Kitzer, the general in Yonem, which I negated to Fabreng, is negated to the Rebbe Sanhoge. And also those things which I saw or I was connected to, involved, but not, uh, I'm sure there are many other people who saw it from a different perspective and have other details to add. And I'm just going to say the way I see it. Number one, I think I want to start with Roshan. Roshan Fabreng was a very frail Fabreng. Um, the whole Fabringen Rebbe was very uvgelik, was very happy, and uh, even at the end of the Fabringen the Rebbe even said something which sounded kiviyochal like a joke. At the end, close to the end of the Fabringen, the Gabbai announced the Seder, like he always would do on the Yont of Diki Fabringen, on the second day of, Pe- of, Sh- of Rosh Hashanah, or second day of Shavuos, or Rachel Shepesach, all these Fabringas on Yontem, where the Rebbe washed, and then the Rebbe, would, they would have Maidiv, so then towards the end of the Fabring, and the Gabbai would make an announcement, to say the Rebbe, this is going to be the order, that Yetz gave the Rebbe bench, and the Rebbe is going to bench, and then we're going to have Maidiv, and then the Rebbe will give Koshal Broche, etc., etc., that's the announcement makes. So in this time, Rosh Hashanah, the second day Rosh Hashanah, by the Fabring, and Toshin Chofei, the Gabbai announced, it's the, the Seder Zayin Azei. Now the Seder will be like this. The Rebbe is going to make a uh, gonna, gonna dove bench. Then they will have a The Rebbe will make a And then there will be Kosha Broche. And no one should push. Azeyot Gehesen the Nayer Vadam Sader. That's what they announced. This is how the new Vadam Sader said. Which means that the Vadam Sader was one that took care of things that will take go by Fabringen, how to set up, and all the different things to take care of Fabringen. So, right, not long before Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe made a new Vadam Sader. The new Vadam Sader was Reb Rebel Groner, Reb David Raskin, Reb Meshe Pinchas Katz, and Reb Zalman Garari. There was new people and new Vadam Sader. They started in putting in new in storm to make a bigger, a better Seder. So. This is what the Gabba made the announcement. Rizal Maduchman, I think, was the one that made the announcement. And he said, Azeyot Gehesen, the Nayer Vadam Sader. This is how the new Vadam Sader said, and we got to listen. So when he finished, the Rebbe started like this. It's the Rezayn, the Seder Zayn Azeyot. He pushed it, imitated what Rizal Maduchman said. He said, first, the Zayn, at Narangin in the nine year. First, we'll go into the new year. And then we're going to learn a lot of Torah, a lot of Nigel, a lot of Chassidus. And from them we'll come to a lot of Mitzvahs Behidur. And before that, the Eibishti will give us Aksiva and Aksiva Tebel, Shonotim, Stuka, and all the details for the Bonim, of Bnei Bonim, and a lot of money, and Brochas, and Atzlochas, and Yeshuas, and the Chomas, like the women say, after Avdoleh. 
And it should be a good year and then the Rebbe finished off and he imitated the Rebbe this is all part like of the Freilachkeit of the Rebbe and with Geret, people were talking that Bechlal Rosh by the Rabbein was a very serious time. It wasn't a time of special freilachkeit, a special joy. Whenever it was, it was like a simon that you have to be mounting the dinim, that you have to sweeten the judgment. So when this happened, so people were saying, this is strange, there's such a simcha on Rosh Hashanah, and hopefully there's nothing, and that we're talking about being mamtik the dinim. The pale mamish, the Rebbe's mother already didn't feel good on Rosh Hashanah, and there are other details around it, but we're not going into. And when it came to Shabbos, Tshuva was with Shabbos Parshas Vayelech, so the Rebbe, she already wasn't feeling well, and the Rebbe was told, and the Rebbe came down late to Shachris because Dr. Zelikson was talking to him, and then there was a Fabrengen, the Fabrengen for Shabbos Tshuva. The Fabrengen finished at 4.30, Actually, in the middle of the Fabrengen, Dr. Zelikson went over to the Rebbe, and I was watching what he said. It wasn't so clear, but I think the word that he said, he asked the Rebbe, till when the Rebbe will Fabreng. And it was known already that the Rebbe's mother is not feeling good, so he asked how long the Rebbe will Fabreng. And I think, and I'm not sure, I think the Rebbe answered him 5.30. And he said to the Rebbe that it's too late. In other words, it's important that the Rebbe should go earlier. And the Rebbe said 4.30. And actually, the Fabrengen finished actually at 4.30. Take. In that Fabrengen, the Rebbe spoke about the posse where it says in Parash Vayelech, Hashem says, I'm going to cover up my face at that time. And the Rebbe spoke a whole union about it in Vart from Baal Shem Tev, And he said that in this Hester, in this concealment, there is a Neuchi, whole Arich as he spoke, but he was crying. In the middle, he was crying very strongly. So it was something very on, on the Rebbe's mind. He also spoke in that same Fabrengen, Benigeye, what says in Targum Yenison on the Posik, by Yelech Meisha, Meisha went. Where did he go? So it says in, 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 in Targum Yenison, he went to the base Ulfen, he went to the Yeshiva to learn Torah. And from that, the Rebbe took out a hero that before you do anything, you have to look into what the Torah says. Before you do anything, even though you're a Talmud Chacham and you remember things from before and you know, you got to look everything up from Torah and you brought a story from the Rebbe Nishma Satan, etc., etc. And it was Negei Ataka to later, you saw that throughout the whole time, from the beginning when she passed away, all the Dini, but Negei Aninus and the uh, the Shiva, constantly before the Rebbe did anything, he asked, you should ask Karov. It fit to what he said before, that you have to look everything what the Torah says. And this was like a hagdome to what he, he did then. There was a maimer in this fabrengen, a maimer ke'en sicher. And the maimer started with the words, shira maimer mi'amakim. It was a hemshech to the maimer of Rosh Hashanah, which started with the posseg, ayim it is a Maimer Ken Sicher, which was a Hemshech to the Maimer before. Later on, on Sukkis, the Maimer started Keser, and that was also a Hemshech. But this Maimer was a Maimer Ken Sicher. It wasn't a Maimer with the Nigan of a Maimer. And it seems that's what people were talking. Again, we don't know. Everyone could say whatever they want. That really the Rebbe had planned to say this Maimer, a regular Maimer, but because he had to finish it for bringing him faster, because of what Dr. Zelikson told him, that's why he changed. Who knows? But the Signa seems, since it was Mamish in the same Hemshech, you see, the Shabbos afterwards, Shabbos Pasha Sazinu, there was a Maimer not in the Hemshech, and that was a Maimer Ken Siche. But this was in the Hemshech. Anyway, we don't know, but Lapel, this is what happened. And the Fabrengen finished at 4.30. After the Fabrengen, the Rebbe would go upstairs into his room, and then they would have Minche. So the Rebbe went up after the Fabrengen to his room, came out right away to Minche. And the Seder used to be that right after Minche, the Rebbe would walk back into his room and it would take a few moments, a few minutes, and then the Rebbe would walk out slowly from the, his room, go down the steps in front of 770, go down, turn left, and walk home with his coat. And his coat was always buttoned. But this time, as soon as Mincha was over, he went into his room fast. This, in, in a split second, he was out of his room already, was walking very fast out of his room all the way down the steps. His coat wasn't even buttoned. And he walked down, and instead of turning left, he turned right. And the interesting thing is, always everyone knew the women stood on the right side and the men on the left side. And the Rebbe walked, he walked where the men were standing. Here, the Rebbe turned right away right, and the women were all standing there, and fast, they had to move, so the Rebbe should be able to walk, and he ran straight to his house. And he went very fast, didn't run, I mean, he went very fast, and he came to his house. We, in 770, started Chazoreh, and in the middle of Chazoreh, that's when we heard 
that the Rebetzin is really, the Matzev is not good, and the Rebetzin is really very, very sick. So we stopped Chazor, and everyone started saying Tilim. And then we heard that the ambulance came, and then the Rebbe, the Rebetzin, they, they, they took her, and the Rebbe in the, went into the ambulance and went to the hospital. And I will continue this in the next broadcast. When we heard that the Rebbe went to the hospital, so a lot of us, meaning Bochrim and Ingolait, also ran to the hospital. The hospital wasn't so far, so we all ran to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, when some of us got to the hospital, we already heard that it was Lachara Maiset already, the Rebbe had passed away. She was nostalgic already. And they said that the Rebbe, even though when they stopped working on her, asked maybe they could still do something to massage the heart. And they said that, that they can do it, that it's not going to help. Then they asked the Rebbe that the Rebbe should wash because the Rebbe hadn't eaten through the Shabbos yet. And they had gotten some way some challah through a goy and they asked the Rebbe to wash. And the Rebbe started discussing, he said, is there a din of aninus on him since it's Shabbos? And he said that you have to ask a rov. And this fits to what they said before, that the Rebbe Lechatchila said that anything before you do anything, you have to ask a rov. So he asked to ask a rov. So someone there answered, Ein aninus b'Shabbos. So the Rebbe asked him, are you a rov or not? But Lepeil Vice Tuesday, the Rebbe did not eat the Sudeh. And they say that the whole time after the Rebbe had passed away, the Rebbe was standing in the room. That's what they were told then. And he was wait, looking at the wind throughout the window, looking, staring just outside of the window. Then they dumped Mairiv. And uh, the, the Rebbe got a Siddur. And after that, when they were going out, the Rebbe saw that there are a lot of people there outside in the room. There were not so many people, but outside there were people and they were pushing. So the Rebbe said, Was tut mazardo, das nishki fabrengen. And the Rebbe said this quite a few times throughout the whole time from that time on till even tomorrow, the next day. But the Levaya, the Rebbe used many times the words nishki fabrengen, vosh tut mazardo. And not only that, the Negei de Bochrem, it was even much stricter. The Rebbe said many times, Was tut on the Bochrem, Was tut on the Bochrem, Was tut mazardo, nishki fabrengen, Was tut on the Bochrem. I remember then when they brought the body down and they put the body into the station wagon in the back where it was flat on the, the seat, I guess, was down and it was flat. And the Rebbe came down, so they asked the Rebbe where he wants to sit. Does he want to sit in the front, in the passenger seat, etc.? So I was standing there and I saw that the Rebbe with his hand made Otado, in, right next to the, or, the body where the body was laying on, in the back of the station wagon. Otado Vilich and here I want to sit. And that's where he sat down. And again, at that time, we looked around, was to in the Bochrim. I was standing there too, but I was standing on the side, trying that the Rebbe shouldn't be Lamish in front, because the Rebbe didn't want that the Bochrim should be there. But I was able to hear what the Rebbe said, and I was able to see what was going on. When they took the body with, with, the, with the station wagon, the Rebbe was in the car to the house. So when the Rebbe went to the house, I wasn't inside, but they say the Rebbe said the first thing about the Shiflot, and people are going to start searching into, in the drawers. So he got people to become Shemrim. Then I remember in the morning, Everybody, with the time of the Levaya, everybody was standing by the house waiting for the Levaya to start by the, on President Street. But the Rebbe came to 770 and there was a minion, Metzumtzim, exact a minion, Davening, made a minion in 770. And the Rebbe came out to say the Kadeshim. This was before the Levaya. The Rebbe came out to say the Kadeshim. I was there and I saw the Rebbe came out to say the Kadeshim. And after that, the Rebbe went back into his room and then I was standing there. The Rebbe came out to the car to go to the house, to go to President Street to the house. He came out holding many, many svarim in his hand. And he went to the car and they went to the, to the house of, to, on President Street. When it came to the Levaya, when they came to the Bisakvaras to the Levaya, and they came to the place where the cave was open, the Rebbe came over there, and there was a lot of pushing, and the Rebbe again said, Vosh dupmazach, Vosh dupmazach. You should stop pushing, but no one could stop. So the Rebbe said, if no one's going to do it, I'll do it myself. And the Rebbe came over, started pushing the people. He actually didn't touch anybody because as soon as he made with his hands, trying to, so to, so to speak, trying to push, the people moved away. But Lapel, he started doing it himself. And then someone started screaming when they put the lower the body, someone was screaming, who is the Klionke? Klionke is a piece of plastic, which they say had some blood on it. They said, who is the Klionke? They couldn't find it and they wanted to bury it. And the Rebbe was very looking, was upset. What, what's the word of Klyonke? So someone said, maybe it's in the car. So the Rebbe said, so let him go to the car and look. And so nobody moved. So the Rebbe said, if nobody's going, I'm going to be going myself. And the Rebbe turned around and started walking towards the car. He started walking away from the place of the caver where we know where it is. And he walked, he got, find, he got to the place, to the oil, by the oil. He saw a bocha standing there. He says, du bist a bocha, was tust du da? you're a bocha, what are you doing here? But then by then they already started screaming that they found the Klyonke, they found it. So the Rebbe went back. 
But this whole thing made the Bochrim feel very bad. It looked like everybody was very upset and everybody had to pay down the Bochrim. So the Elter Bochrim got together and they decided we got to do something to take off the pay there. So they did something which till then was not really done, even though now it's done always. Every time there's a Shiva, so there's a Chalukah Samishnai that people take to finish. But then it wasn't done. So the Bochrim decided we'll make a Chalukah Samishnai of the Bochrim to be finished before by to, before Yom Kippur, because that's when the Shiva is over. Not the seven days, but that's when this, the actual Shiva was over. So they made this chluke, and they typed up the list of the names, and gave it to Rabbi Chadukov to give to the Rebbe. Rabbi Chadukov gave it to the Rebbe, it was in the middle of Shiva, and the Rebbe looked at it, and the Rebbe said to him, that's what he repeated later, Akeres Ruach, this gives me pleasure. He looked at it again, and he said, A greaser Keres Ruach, a big pleasure. And then he looked at it again, and he said, A gor greaser Keres Ruach. And when we heard this, every, all the Bochrim felt much better because at least this took off some of the Kpeide. And actually what happened, Erevim Kippur, by Kol Nidre, so the Rebbe gave the Broche to the Bochrim first. Always he would give the Broche, the broche to people earlier. And then before Kol Nidre, he would give it to the Bochrim. But this time he didn't give the Broche to everybody earlier because he was still in the middle of Shiva and Mincha was actually in the house. Not in 770. So he came, gave first the Broche to the Bochrim before Kol Nidre. He came down and then he gave the bracha to everybody, and then he said that they should make the Sima Mishnais. Now they made the Sima Mishnais, and the Rebbe said the Kaddish Darabonim. The Kviyas of Rosh Hashanah in the year Tovshin Chofches, which is 1967, it was that it was Thursday and Friday, and then was Shabbos. The Shabbos before that was Parshas Vayel and Tovim Vayelech, Shabbos and Vorchim, it was Chof Heyelol, Shabbos Liches, Tovshin Chof Zayin. The Rebbe said something very interesting. The Rebbe quoted what it says that Semach Tzedek brings, the name of the Baal, in time, something that happened, time of the Baal Shem Tev. He said that sometimes we don't even listen to the Sotan at all. The Sotan comes to be Mekatrik, to prosecute, but we don't listen to him. And he says there, there was a Maise, like the Maise that was Bimea Baal Shem Tev Zal, in time of the Baal Shem Tev, Sherotfu HaBezn Shalmailo, the Sotan HaMakatrik L'Chev, that the Bezn Shalmailo chased out the Sotan that was Makatrik, and they didn't want to hear any Ketrugim. So, since Baal Shem Tev write, the Tzemach Tzedek writes it, so this is something that's printed, and printed means it lasts forever, but Mela, this is something forever. So therefore, this, the Sotan is chased out, and we don't even need a bezin because the bezin is only there when you have two sides, but the sotan is not there, and therefore it's only a good year. And the Rebbe, I think, said that that year was like a very good year for the Eden. And then the Rebbe continued after the bracha achreina. So he said, since this is the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah, the Shabbos sliches, and Shabbos is a day of simcha, we should be mamshir the simcha to the whole week. And therefore, every night between the the Shabbos. And Rosh Hashanah should be a Fabrengen. And the Rebbe said it should be a Fabrengen starting from Moshe Shabbos from Lama Malke. Then it should be a Fabrengen Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night. So these are four, which is connected, I think he said, connected the four Elamis. And this should be a Fabrengen every night which Fabreng. And that's actually what happened. Every night that year was a big Fabrengen. The Bochrim were all involved in Fabrengen. The Fabrengen lasted throughout the whole night. And... It was taki gishmake fabrengas, the bochim of fabrenging, and it was a very big, uplifting time of these fabrengas. But, obviously, since they fabrenged the bochim a whole night, these nights, the next day to say there was pretty shvach. The bochim didn't come to say because they set up a whole night. So Shabbos after that, which is Shabbos tshuva, because Rosh Hashanah was Thursday, so Shabbos tshuva was right at Hemshot Rosh Hashanah. So Shabbos tshuva, the Rebbe said, spoke about this Indian, and the Rebbe said that the Gemara says the first question that a person will be asked when he comes to Maila will be that what was it Ben Gea learning? And the Gemara says, so the Rebbe said that there, uh, not the first was source of Sata Bamuna, and then he says the question is going to be also, did you learn? So he says, Ben Gea, the Yeshiva Bochrim, that means that when it comes this time, they have to make sure to learn, which means they have to make sure to keep the Sidre Yeshiva. No matter what they do, even though it's going to be Aseres and Yeshiva now, they have to keep the Sidre Yeshiva, which this was Behemshech to what happened before Rosh Hashanah, that the Bochrim fabrenged all night and they didn't really keep the Seder. And the Rebbe said that what it means is that even though this is a special time, 
Nevertheless, Sidorim, you have to keep. Ah, you tiny, it's a time of Bimotza, Bimotza, it's a time of Debish, you're close to us. So certainly you have to keep the city in our yeshiva. But the Rebbe said you can't haparain things which you have to do everything with a seder. It has to be according to the seder yeshiva. I, a person katain the bocher katain that says in kisve arizal you should learn more kabbalah during the seresi mitshuva, which means not nigla. So even though kabbalah he doesn't know because he didn't yeshiva didn't teach kabbalah, but at least he shouldn't learn nigla. So the Rebbe said it's not like that. That it means that you have to keep the seder yeshiva. The other things that you could do for bring or other things is only outside of this dorim of the yeshiva. But during this dorim of the yeshiva. You have to you have to do it according to the Zdorim of the Yeshiva. In other words, this is and this is negate the Rebbe said side to the Bochrim, side to the Hanhola, that they also have to keep the Zdorim and because they're also really Talmidim, they're Talmidim of the Abishtar. So the Rebbe said that the Zdorim are very important. And I have to say the Rebbe did not say it, speak this some uh, with a very strict tone. Sometimes the Rebbe would speak and criticize a talk and they're doing something would be very strict. You could see it's a strict tone. This was spoken very softly. He spoke the Indian very clear, but he spoke it with a tone that was a tone, a loving tone. And then after this Sikha, the Rebbe continued and he said even though really we should speak the Russia now the Rebbe continued that there are especially what I said before goes to those Bochum that came from Eretz Yisrael that their whole hatred of going out from Eretz Yisrael is to learn so Mela they have have to keep the Sidr Yeshiva and then the Rebbe said and if I remember correctly he said this with a smile he said that some people tiny that, that the reason they didn't come to say that is because they overslept their anus it's forced that they, they didn't mean to do it so the Rebbe said, the Allah is, Tchilosi B'Pshia, the Seyfa Be'inus has a din of a Pshia, not a din of a Pshia. Tchilosi B'Pshia means if something starts off with being negligent, your fault. But it ends up that the reason it happened was Be'inus by force. In Halach, it has a din of a Pshia, that means it is your fault, it's not called an Einus. So here too, the reason your Einus to wake up late in the morning is because it's your fault, you went to sleep late. Or Mamele, the Rebbe said, that's not an excuse. And then the Rebbe said, since we are under the Anholis, so you have to follow the Anholis, and the Friedrich Rebbe said, a yeshiva bocher is under the Anholis, especially a yeshiva in the bocher of Temchut Mimim. So the Rebbe said, you know what? Go over to the Anholis and try to explain to them the importance of a brain at night. And the Mele, if you explain to them, and the Rebbe used the lotion, and again, I think he said this with a smile, that you could explain to them, Kayad Hashem Ateva with your best ex- ability that you're able to explain things and try to convince the Anhole that it's important for brain. Give a melee, you don't have to come to Seder or to some story. Or the Rebbe didn't tie trees. So the Rebbe said, if you explain, they agree with it, fine. But you're always under Anhole. So what happened after this, this Sikhe, so there was still continued for Fabrengens at night, but that week of Aseres in the Zal was full. Bochrim fabrengd a lot at night, maybe all night, I can't say all night, a lot of night, different Bochrim. The Zal was full a whole week after this. That they took the lesson that the Rebbe said that you have to fabrengd, and he said, you should fabrengd, but you got to speak to Anhol to get Rishus. But Lepel Mamish, what turned out was the Bochrim fabrengd with great Gishmak. The whole week was a real st- strong fabrengd as long as the Bochrim. And the Seder was very strong and the Bochrim learned very well that week. We know that till the middle of Tovshin Lamad Aleph, which is 1971, the Rebbe would eat the Yontif meals upstairs in the Friedrich Rebbe's apartment, which means as long as the Friedrich Rebbe's Rebbe in Hamadina was alive, the meals on Yontif were eaten upstairs. But really, it's not only on Yontif that the Rebbe went upstairs, there were other times of the year. Motzi Yom Kippur was also a meal, even though it's not a regular Yontif, but we know it's called Yontif, and Mele the Rebbe ate a regular meal upstairs, and it was exactly like on Yontif when you had the whole table was surrounded with Elter Chassidim who were invited to the meal, so Motzi Yom Kippur was the same. But besides that, also other times of the year, but it wasn't a regular meal, like Yudas Kislev and Purim, Yudas Tamuz, the Rebbe before the Fabrengen would go upstairs, the table was set with Mezenes and Mashke and different things, and the Elter Chassidim were invited and they were sitting around the table, and the Rebbe would come in, sit down, and sit there for a short while, and someone would say something, and they said L'chaim there in honor of that special date. As Kisla put him, or Yud I even remember once, I think it was a Yud I don't remember exactly, but I think it was a Yud that they were all sitting around, and the Mitten, the Rebbe Tznachamadina, walked in. So as she walked in, she came to the front of the table, that's a long table, she came to the, like the edge of the table, and the Rebbe was at the other end, not in the front, he was sitting on the side, which means to the left of the Friedrich Rebbe, the front 
was empty, left for the, the place of the Friedrich Rebbe, and on the right side was Ashag, and the left side was the Rebbe, and on the other end of the table, she walked in, so I remember when she walked in, the Rebbe stood up, everybody stood up, and for a few moments, she gave a broche, I don't remember what she said, I was standing there, she gave a broche, and she walked out, and everyone sat down. What I'm trying to bring out is a different story, that Tov Shinchov Gimel, which is 1962, Motzi Yim Kippur, the meal was upstairs, like I said before, the Rebbe ate the meal upstairs. In the Rebbe's place, they put down Lecha Mishneh, two chalas. So when the Rebbe washed and ate, made a meitzi, he took the two chalas together, I remember, and he cut it like you do on Shabbos and Yontif. So during the meal, the Shmuel of Itten asked the Rebbe if there's a Psayinian to have Lecha Mishneh, Motzi Yim Kippur. So the Rebbe said, no, there's no mocker. He doesn't know of any mocker for Lecha Mishneh, Motzi Yim Kippur. And he said, it was laying, two chalas were laying here, so I did it, but there's no inyan in it. That's what he said. Remember these words he said. It was laying there, they put it down, so I, I took it, but not that there's no inyan. And then he said, I don't know if it was serious word or it's bederach halotze, just like, uh, no halotze by the Rebbe, but I mean he said it like l'chidude, that he said that, you know, Yom Kippur, Meish Rabbeinu came down from Har Sinai, and that's when the Ebershev was Meichel the Eden for the Chet Egel. And that time, Eden didn't have to fast on Yom Kippur because the din of fasting on Yom Kippur first came later, became the special day of Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. So they were able to eat, according to the opinion that holds that that year Yom Kippur was Shabbos, they were not allowed to fast because you're not allowed to fast on Shabbos. And since there was no din to fast, they probably ate. And since Meshach Rabbeinu came down, was connected to Tshuva, because he brought down the kapora, which is connected to tshuva, and by tshuva it says kiflayim liteshia. Tshuva brings the double, so maybe maybe that's why they were put down lecha mishne. But not that there is a din of lecha mishne amotzim kipper. In the fabrengen of Simchas Beis Hasheiva Tov Shin Chov Dalit, the Rebbe spoke about what the Rebbe writes in Sidir in the Gea Bench Nesrig. That mitzvahs nitilose besuke he mitzvah mena mufchar. That you should bench esrik in the suke. And that is mitzvah mena mufchar. That means that it's a better, doing, better way of doing the mitzvah. So the Rebbe explained that the reason for this is because it's part of the mitzvah of suke. Since it says by sukes, teishvuke into duru, that you have to sit in the suke just like you live in the home. And that's why you have to eat and drink in the suke. So too, when you're going to do a special mitzvah, it should be done in the sukkah. And the Rebbe explained, I from the Alter Rebbe's lotion is mashma, that this is a din mitzat lulav. It's a, a mitzvah in, amufcher in the mitzvah of Esrik and lulav, but it's not because of the sukkah. So the Rebbe explained that what the Alter Rebbe means in addition, that Chetchila, this is a din in the sukkah. But in addition to that, mitzvah, the mitzvah of Dalet Minim, it's also a mitzvah in amufcher to do it in the sukkah. By one of the meals, Harav Dubruskin, he was one of the guests that came for Tishrei that year. He was a Choshevarov, and he was also invited to be part of the meal by the Rebbe in the Friedrich Rebbe's apartment. Those years, the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe would eat by the, in the Friedrich Rebbe's apartment, the Yom Tevim, and they would invite the Elter Chsidim or Choshev, a guest. So he was once one of the guests that was invited there. And by the meal, they would ask questions sometimes and the Rebbe would answer. So he asked the Rebbe by the meal, that according to what the Rebbe said, that this is mitzat sukkah, that since sukkahs you have to live in the sukkah like you live in the house, so you have to do the important things in the sukkah, so the reason you bench Esik is because it's part of the mitzvah of sukkah, so you should have to make a brach aleisha basukkah when you bench Esik. So the Rebbe answered, so that's why it's Kedai that you should eat right after you bench Esring in the sukkah, you should eat a piece of Mazenus. And Bemele, you will be making a Leisha Basuka on the Mazenus, and that'll go on the Esring also. So he asked the Rebbe, but this is before davening. As if saying, how could you eat Mazenus before davening? So the Rebbe said, no. As if saying, Nishgifelach. Actually, I wasn't there Bishas Maise, but I remember standing downstairs when the people from the meal came down and they told this over that this is what the conversation was. This is how the conversation took place. Now, later on, after Yontef, Isruchag, always Isruchag Sukkot, there was always a Kinos Torah that the Choshev Rabbonim, the guest, would speak as Seipul Pulim. So he was one of the speakers, and I remember his Pilpul was, he asked the Kasha, 
that what did the Rebbe mean that after you bench Esrik, you'll eat Mazenius, you'll make a Leisha Basuka, so that'll go on the Esrik too. The din by a broche of a mitzvah is that you have to do the broche, say the broche before you do the mitzvah. Ever Lassiosan before you do the mitzvah. And here you're going to say the broche, Leisha Basuka, that should go on the Esrik afterwards. So his whole pilpul was that by, by the din of Sukkah specifically, he brought rayas that we find that you, the broch of Leishev HaSukkah from later goes on before. And the truth is that in Lekut HaSichas, in Chelik Chobbeis, when this Sikha was printed in the Smugia, in Pasha's Emer, second Sikha to Emer, there it's not stressed so much that this is a din in the Sukkah. There it's more that this is a din in the Esrik, that it doesn't say so much a din in the Sukkah, but at the end of the Sikha it does mention that, and that's all based on this Fabrengen of Simcha Reis Hashayver, the Sikha is from that Fabrengen, and actually the Rebbe did say that it's Kedai to make a Leish of Asukah by eating after, uh, after the benching the Esrik to eat some Azanus and make a Leish of Asukah. And I don't know if the Rebbe meant that it should become a meaning like that, and I don't know exactly the Loshan if he said that's how it should be or it could be, if you want to could do, but definitely the Teichen was there. The Kviyas of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in the year of Tovshin Chov Dalet, which is 1963, was that Rosh Hashanah was Thursday and Friday, and then the Shabbos Shuva, the day right after that, and then Yom Kippur Shabbos. The Rebbe Dab Mairiv, the Motzi Shabbos, Shabbos Shuva, he Dab Mairiv upstairs, like he used to do always, that Motzi Shabbos Mairiv was upstairs, not downstairs. And I remember that when they Dab, came to the end after Shmanesre, the Chazan started saying Kaddish, but it looked like from when the Rebbe went back, because he used to go back, if there was a Chotzi Kaddish, he would go back right after, right at the end of the Chotzi Kaddish, he would walk back, when he finished Mnesri, he walked back, and he would walk back to Ishtender then. If it was a whole Kaddish, Kaddish is Kabul, he would stay longer. So it seemed like from the Rebbe, that the Rebbe did not want they should say, Vihinei Amenat Kaddish. We don't say the name at Kodesh only if it's a Motzei Shabbos that that week will be, middle of the week will be Yontif. Now, if Yom Kippur would be middle of the week, obviously Motzei Shabbos before this, Motzei Shabbos Shuvah, you do not say the name and at Kodesh. But since it's Shabbos, so it's not the middle of the week. Yom Kippur is Shabbos. But Erev Yom Kippur is, is Friday is in the middle of the week. And Erev Yom Kippur is also a Yontif. So there's a Shaila, do we say the name Vata Kodesh, the Motzei Shabbos before, because of the Yontav of Erebim Kippur, which bets him the same Shaila would be by Pesach, if Shabbos Agodel, Motzei Shabbos Agodel, if Pesach happens to be Shabbos, do we say or not? But anyway, this was not the story. The story here was that it was Benegea Motzei Shabbos Tshuve, Benegea Yom Kippur. And the Chazan didn't know what to do. And I don't remember, actually, if the Chazan did finish the Kaddish with the Skabal or he stopped before that, I don't remember. But Lepel, the Rebbe turned around and the Rebbe said, no, what's the din? Do we say by name at the Kodesh today? And he said, Ver gedenkt vimiot giton bam Rebbe Who remembers how they did when the same kvias came out in the time of the Friedrich Rebbe? And no one answered, no one knew. Then the Rebbe said, Sholom Chaskin. For that Tisha, Sholom Chaskin came from Eretz Yisrael. And Shalom Chaskin was around in the time of the Friedrich Rebbe. And Shalom Chaskin was known to be a person that would follow the Minhogim and he would know these things. Fui Shalom Chaskin. So they went downstairs. He wasn't upstairs. He wasn't in the shul upstairs. He was downstairs. So someone ran downstairs, found Shalom Chaskin. He ran up and he came into the shul. Now you even remember, he came in through the middle door, which means the door that's by the Omid. And I even remember he jumped over the table I remember the tzir, he jumped over the table and walked straight over to the Rebbe who was standing in the corner by the door where the clock is, by that door with the shtender. And the Rebbe says to him, no, du gedenks viet min getom am Rebbe neshver. And he didn't remember. So the Rebbe looked around, turned around, and was back on the shtender looking to the wall and the Elam didn't know what to do, so the Elam did say the name and not the Kodesh. The Rebbe did not say. That's what it looked like. The Rebbe did not say name at the Kodesh. And then they finished davening and the Rebbe went into his room. Now that year, the Sefer Raman Hogim came out. And if I remember correctly, in the Sefer Raman Hogim, when they gave it into the Rebbe to be Magia, they added in the Minhogim of Yom Kippur, of Shabbos Shuva, that in the case where Shabbos Shuva is the day after Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur is the next Shabbos, we do not say the name of the Kodesh, because that's what the Rebbe did. Lepel, the Rebbe did not say. And Lepel, the Rebbe crossed out that line. 
And the fact is that since then, whenever it came out, we do say Vinayim Vatakodesh. So why the Rebbe didn't say it then is not so clear. And I'm pretty sure that it was originally put in because they thought that since the Rebbe didn't say it, that's what the Rebbe wanted. And the Rebbe crossed it out. But this is something that we have to be Mavarer.